Given that synesthesia doesn't have uh, any obvious disadvantages, people often wonder, well, does it have any real advantages? Could it be positively selected for? Uh, and uh, there are several candidates for this. So Professor Ramachandran, for example, has argued that synesthesia might be related to the evolutionary acquisition of language because there are non-arbitrary rules as to how people map uh, objects onto spoken words. So if you take two shapes, one of which is very rounded, uh, and one of which is very spiky, and you ask people which one is called booba and which one is called kiki, then they map booba onto the rounded shape and kiki onto the spiky shape. Uh, and this it doesn't seem to be to do with literacy, it's found in illiterate cultures and it's found in three and four year olds as well. So the suggestion here is that you can develop a kind of common vocabulary that's shared amongst people uh, simply by using these synesthesia-like mappings. And this is a very interesting suggestion, but it's not clear to me whether this relates to synesthesia itself in terms of these unusual actual experiences, such as seeing music literally visually, uh, as opposed to the kinds of mappings that we all have in all of our brains. So is it something special about the one, two, three percent of people who have synesthesia, or is it really related to the kind of multisensory perception that we all have? Now, of course, you could say, well, the people with synesthesia are just an extreme form of this form of multisensory perception. So it's not the synesthesia itself that's been selected for. It's the tendency to link concepts together in these particular ways. Uh, so, so, so there is something in this argument, but it's very hard to prove or disprove uh, from an evolutionary perspective. Another candidate as to why synesthesia might have been positively selected for is that it conveys a memory advantage. Um, so we do know that synesthetes are better at remembering um, words and stories, for example, but also remembering things like colours and shapes as well. Uh, so so they, they don't have a globally better memory, but their memory does extend to things that are actually useful uh, and that might be um, useful in illiterate cultures as well. So we know that literacy is a cultural invention, but, but things like uh, words and remembering certain patterns and so on is, is something that, that would extend back in time and that could have been useful to our ancestors. So, so I think that there is a strong case that synesthesia might convey a memory advantage and this could have been selected for uh, over time. So one problem with finding a, a function for synesthesia in, in terms of an evolutionary advantage is that there are so many different types of synesthesia and that we have to think, well, are we just talking about whether this type of synesthesia conveys an advantage or does it apply to all of the types in general? And I think that this is one general problem in the field that we don't have a very convincing answer to. Um, so you could say, well, uh, multisensory perception in general conveys an advantage, and insofar as synesthesia is an extreme, although different way of doing that, it could just be something that, that is a consequence of, uh, of, the, of this broad trend. Or it could be that the more common types of synesthesia, such as experiencing colours for words and so on, um, has an advantage and you get all the other types for free, if you will, as a result of those more general changes. Uh, but we don't have a convincing answer for that at the moment.